Okay, it's uh, another day here. Um, it's time to set the treads. They finally got me the glue that I needed to set the treads. I've already uh, gone through these and drew, drew an X on all the ones that aren't square. Um, I've taken my square and put them in the corners and uh, checked out to see which one squares or not. There's enough of them here that um, warrants me to use a tool that I have. Let me see if I can find it here. Uh-oh. Look at that. Okay, well, let me see if I can find it here. Yep, all the way in the back there. You have a van as small as mine you gotta find every nook and cranny you can to fit tools What this is, is it's a tread marker. And what this does is instead of a short one, I would have a longer one. You know, the width of the stairs or almost to the width of the stairs. But I'll just use this as an example for the size of the camera, for the width of the camera or whatever. This is what it would like, look like on a longer one. And then I can pivot these and lock them into place whatever angle these treads are on either side. I put it in there, I spread them apart, and then I press them tight to each skirt board. And then I lock them in place, and then I take that and I transfer it onto a a tread and then I can make my mark on either end of the tread that gives me the length I mean the width of it and the angle of either side pretty handy little tool I gotta thank another youtuber for this he showed me that uh, he had one of these and he put it in uh, a link on his in his descriptions I went ahead and ordered them. But the ones he had were a lot more expensive than these. These are the same exact ones that he has, but these were the cheaper ones. <laughs> I think they were still like 58 bucks, but um, nonetheless, they work really well. It makes your, uh, your treads dead on. And you don't have to worry about any gaps on either side of the treads when you use something like this. I need to cut a piece of one by the width of these stairs. I made it about 39 inches.
got a pencil. Now what I do is take this off. Put this on either end of this. Just sort of snug it up because I gotta move it. And I'll show you what it does. Come on, there we go. Hey. Yeah, tighten that side. And I butt it tight to the riser because that's where the tread's going to go. And I butt this one to bite tight to the riser in the back. And then I hold it tight to the, make sure it's tight all the way across. I tighten these down. I got to write these right and the left. That will always tell me that this goes in this direction. So when I transfer this onto the tread, my marks will always be right. Okay, let's see what we got here. Gotta make sure you don't bang that around either because you don't want it to move on your change. Okay. Got my right side on the right. The only thing with this is you have to cut both sides of the tread. But when you have skirt boards that are out of square, you have no choice. You have to do what you gotta do. You got to make it right. This is the back of the tread, so you got to make sure this points all the way to flush with the back of the tread. All right. I'm going to cut this real quick. my clamp so it doesn't move. Cut through my light.
Okay. Let's see how it fits. Can't get much tighter than that. Let me show you. Look at that nice tight joint. All the way on the back, all the way on the left side, nice and tight. That's what happens when you have the right tools for the job. So now I gotta get, let me turn around this way, here we go. Now I've gotta get 15, 15 more like that, 16 more like that. So let me get at it. I'm gonna put you on time lapse. I uh, started editing the video from yesterday. Boy, it's gonna be a long one. I didn't realize I've videoed that many. It's gonna be over an hour long. So that's why I didn't put it out last night. I just got started on the editing. I was on it for almost five hours yesterday. I'm gonna have to put a couple more hours in it tonight. I'm gonna make this one a short one. Um, it's gonna be a lot of time lapse on this one, I think. But um, yeah, let me go ahead and get these in and I'll let you watch me from the back from over here. All right. Let me put you in a corner over here. There we go. That'll be better. Houston, I think we have a problem. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. The problem is, my overhang on my tread here, I think it's supposed to be only a certain distance. I have to pull up the uh, my codes. Two and a quarter inches. Oh boy, boy. I'm gonna need to pull this up real quick here. Oop. Thing is, I got so much, so many Facebook postings in my pictures here. Search through everything to find it. Oops, is it? Nope. 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 Ah. Okay, stairways with okay. Headroom, risers, treads. The minimum tread depth shall be 10 inches. I've got 11 and a half. So I've got plenty if I have to cut any, cut any off. Tread depth shall be measured horizontally between the vertical planes of the foremost 
projection of adjacent treads at the right angle to tread wedge eddy. That's for when stairs go around a corner. And the closest, I mean, if it, if it angles all the way around on a landing, you've got to have so much tread there. Okay, now, the nosings. Nosings, here we go. The radius of curvature at the nosing shall be no greater than 9 sixteenths of an inch. And that's where my, so, that's where my pitcher boops out. Let me pull up carpentry. Let me pull up IRC. Ooh, let me pull up that picture again. I know what code that was. Uh, R31. pull my IRC app which gives me all the codes that I have that are national codes let me see uh, R31 dash 1.7 point 5.3 search Come on. Let me just go R31 and search. Okay. We pull up 31. That goes under. Let's see. Well, let me put you on pause. Okay, found it. R311.7.5.3, nosings. The radius of a curvature of the nosing shall be not greater than 9 sixteenths of an inch, a nosing projection not less than 3 quarters of an inch, and not more than 1 and a quarter inches shall be provided on stairway, stairways with solid risers. The greatest nosing projection shall not exceed the smallest nosing projection by more than 3 eighths of an inch between two stories including the nosing at the level of the floors and landings. Beveling of nosing shall not exceed half inch. Ex exception of a nosing projection is not required where the tread depth is not less than 11 inches. Okay, so exception of nosing projection is not required where the tread depth is not less than 11 inches. Okay, so right there tells me that I should be good because it's an exception. A nosing projection is not required. The tread depth is not less than 11 inches. So this is not less than 11 inches. So, okay, we're good. It can be whatever it is. Boy, that's pretty, pretty good because uh, it's usually half inch smaller than that. At least, no, it's even more than that. It's almost Three quarters smaller than that, usually. Okay, well, we keep going. Let's put you on time lapse. Thank you. 
Alright, let's go get this installed. See, I don't know if I showed you this yesterday. When I did this turnout, I always put this 22 on here. So that when you're walking up, it doesn't, if you ever hit your hip on it, or a little kid hits their head on it, it's pretty forgiving. It's not a sharp edge like this would be. So, well, this isn't really a sharp edge, but it's a, it's a corner. Oop. Okay, I got a phone call. i put you on pause. <laughs> yeah, that was the, uh, one of the supervisors, one of the big honcho guys. And he says, well, you told me it was supposed to be a one by eight by eight. I says, no, I didn't. I says it was supposed to be a one by 10 by 10, eight. Why would I say that I needed an eight, one by eight, when I needed a one by 10? Trying to put that off on me. <laughs> yeah, See, that's how it goes. But it is what it is. Just give me the right material out here so I can do my work. That's all I care about. Let's get this last piece in. tries to push their failings on somebody else. I guess it's easier. Seven and an eighth. Better hope that four is at least three eighths of an inch thick. Okay. See how nice that one came out? I got a nice wood grain up here. It's gonna be pretty. Alright. So bring all this downstairs. And we'll I'll get you set up for the balusters, put you on the tripod so I can explain these balusters to you. And then that'll be a full stair package for you. Okay, let me put you on pause here, get you set up. I gotta change the battery anyway. So that I can have the stairway complete and I'll show you a complete set of stairs anyways. Um, now that all the treads in and everything, the painters can come back, caulk everything in and give it the final coat of clear coat and everything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get these balusters in. Now what I usually do is I will pull my tape measure on the bottom part here from the longest point to the shortest point all the way down. And that gets me at 82, all right? And then I mark the center, which would be 41. There, 41. All right, that gives me the center of this whole span because I like to work from the center and work my way out because um, that way there's less chance, it, it diminishes the chance of um, the balusters moving uh, by half because you're doing this half this way and then this half this way. So if there's any discrepancy in the size of the balusters and the balusters move any, 
then your eye won't catch it as bad. Because if you started at one end and worked all the way down, you could be almost, you know, five sixteenths of an inch off. And by doing it this way, you could be like three sixteenths this way and three sixteenths this way. And your eye won't catch that. But a full over a quarter inch, your eye will catch it. So I've got my halfway mark here. That will be the center of my middle baluster. And then what I do is I transfer that line going up to see if I can get my laser. Come on. Okay, my laser level is dead on. So make my mark up here. This will be the center of my baluster up here. And this will be the center of my baluster down here. So what I need to do is I need to turn this off so it won't shine me in the eye. Is pull my measurement. And what I gotta do is I gotta put my left side of my tape right on that line. Because that's what's touching because of the angle. And then the right side of my tape up here. And this is up inside. This is routed out. It's uh, grooved out to accommodate for the baluster, the square square baluster. So if you can see my finger, it's eaten up about a quarter inch of my finger. It goes up that far up inside there. So I know that he said so. Yep, full quarter inch. So I know that's the top of back here. So when I pull my measurement. I'm going to pull right to that line. So that's 29 and a quarter. By running my jigs before on top of my cap, before I put my rail, when I did my jigs, I cut my two jigs exactly the same length. I did that on purpose so that every one of my balusters, now I can cut at 29 and a quarter. I can cut them all with a surety that they will all be plumb. And to the and the proper length because I, I ran my jigs. So what I need to do is there is a code that you have to follow um, the the spacing of bet between each baluster. Um, the spacing you cannot fit your fist it cannot fit a four inch ball in between the two balusters. It's got to stop or have restriction. Um, it depends on the inspector. If it, if he takes that forest ball and there's, he can get it through there, he'll fail you. He wants to be able to make sure that it doesn't go through. Um, but there's other about you know inspectors that if they you know if it touches on either side of it, they're okay with it because the code stipulates that it can be no more than four inches. So. If they could get a four inch ball through there, it's no more than four inches, as long as it's touching on both sides of the ball. So, now, how do I get that measurement when everything's at an angle? Generally, by rule of thumb, everybody on our job um, that does stairs, because there are other guys other than myself, we pretty much on a rule, um, when we run, Balusters on a flat rail system, we run on center every four inches will be the center of the baluster. And that will give us beyond, you know, what the code is. It's, you know, uh, on a rake, it's one inch more. It would be every, my mark would be every five inches. All right. So what I can do is just put a mark every five inches. Let me see where I can where that. See, this will tell me if you if I show you this, you'll understand why why I'm gonna have to do what I'm gonna have to do next. Do you see where my tape ends? It's too close to that post. And. I've got my tape right on 40. So every five inches, I would have to make a mark, but that is that we can't put 
a baluster that close to the post. But if I don't put one there, then there would be too much of a space between the post and the baluster. So what I do is I move scenes that I know this spacing here is going to be five inches. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that in half. Now this will be my center post to erase this line. Okay. So that would divide that space in half. Now, if I pull my five inch every five inch all the way down, now you can see, see thing. Now you can see that my baluster is further away from the post. I, that's a tolerable space. It's all what the space is going to be in between each baluster anyways. So let me go ahead and do this. I can mark this roughly every five inches, 20, 15, 10, five, and zero out. All right. And I'll do that all the way up to the top. And I'll show you something at the top too. We got a 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, and 0 out. Okay, now, if you see this, where my last pencil mark is right here. You can see, okay, the balusters are an inch and a quarter. So five eighths on either side of this line is where the baluster is going to be. So this is going to be the gap in between here and here. So this is going to have roughly about a two and three eighths inch gap, two and a half inch gap. Two and a half inches up here. Whoops. Fix the camera here. Now, with that baluster being two and a half inches away from the wall, see where that puts me? It puts me in the safe zone. I won't be up inside here, you know, where all this is. It, the edge of my baluster is going to be right where my tape is. So that'll be perfect. That'll put me at about two and a half inches from the baluster to the wall and about two and a half inches from the post to the baluster. And that's tolerable. Now they also sell a tool that it's like a, um, almost like those uh, closing doors. The uh, <laughs> what do you call them? Um, but anyways, they have a tool that expands out and it stops at either end and it shows you it, it right in, in the point of every every x it, you can make a mark and it evenly distributes the balusters and that tool is almost three or something dollars when i can just use a tape measure and get the same results so mathematics always rules <laughs> all right let me uh shut this off or i could put this on uh yeah, I'll put this on time lapse and let you see what I'm doing here. Let me put you over here. Hopefully the sun won't bleed you out. Uh, I'll put you over here. Now you can see everything I'm doing. Okay. Okay, what did I say that was? 29 and a quarter, right? I don't know, I don't hear you. So let me double check. Measure twice, cut once. Ooh. Ooh. 
Maybe it doesn't look right. You get my level. Always double check your work, it never hurts. Never hurts to double check your work. If you're off a quarter inch, it shows. And no, I was right on. Okay, I just didn't my, I just didn't move my line like I remember I moved this one two and a half inches. I didn't move this one two and a half inches. That's why. So, we said 29 and a quarter, right? Oh, we go. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. I can almost go 29 and 5 sixteenths. But if I go 25, 29 and a quarter, that gives me a little bit of leeway so I can move the baluster if I need to. So, I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 29 and 40. Let's see if one fits first. And we believe that was a 39 and 39.5. I remember correctly. 29 and a quarter. Okay, so I set my saw at 39.5 degrees. Because that's, if you remember correctly from yesterday, that's what this calculated to be. Putting this right on the center. Well, actually, what I could do is I could put it right on the line for right now. Yeah, see, I could have gone 5 sixteenths, but this will give me a chance to move the baluster if I need to. Okay. I can go ahead and nail this one. I'm going to put the mark right in the center of my baluster. I'll put two nails and down low because this also gets this in between each baluster. I cut the, you know, cut it at 39.5 so it's angled and I put my nails lower than this so that you don't see the nails. All you see is just nothing but clean baluster. Put this mark right in the center. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick. Get this up out of my way here. Get it up from one of my feet around my saw. You don't want anything around your feet. Debris or anything. Cut off from your material. You don't want anything under your feet around your saw. You don't want to trip into your running blade. That's for sure. Okay. Now, I have two and five-eighths of an inch spacing between the two balusters. I'm going to move this one two and five-eighths, 
Put it right there. Pencil marker real quick so I know that in case it moves. Then now I know that my balusters are dead on. I want to make sure to double check my first one. Put my level on there. Yep, we're good. Actually, tap a chest ahead. Okay. Now I know I'm good. Yep, dead on. And I still have two and five eighths, top and bottom. Okay. Now I'm going to weigh this up against here. Let me show you here. Okay, I'm going to weigh this up against here. So it butts up to this one here. And I'm going to pencil mark it there. I'm going to cut that on this side of the line, my thumbnail side of the line, and then I'll pull a measurement on this. Then I will repeat this cut. I'll make how many of these? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen times two, so I need thirty-two of these. That way, for every baluster I put in, I put two of these in. That way, I don't have to keep pulling the tape measure on the, in between the two balusters. This will already space them for me. So if I cut 32 of these, everything will be spaced out exactly the same. Put one on the bottom, one on the top. And that way, everything will be spaced out properly. See, I go ahead and I went ahead and put a pencil mark right there. So I know that that is where I gotta stop every time. So I can repeat cut. Go ahead and put you here, and then you can see what I'm doing. Let's see. Here. can I? That may make me short what I need. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need about 32 plus the four ends.
I'll save this for the end ones because it's going to be shorter than these anyway. So save those for the end ones. See what I'm doing here? Now all I have to do is cut a baluster, put it in place. These will hold it in the, in the proper place. Hold it right in place for me. I won't have to worry about whether it's plumb or if I have the proper spacing between the two. It automatically already has it there for me. Okay. See, falls right into place. Two nails in there. Two nails in there. And two more of these. One on the bottom. One on the top. One on the bottom. Okay, I'll put you on speed.
Okay, I guess I was talking to you on the uh, time warp <laughs> that they call it on this camera. But anyways, let me uh, do this again. Well, there's the one package, it's completely done. It's all set except for I have two caps on the knee walls up top that need to be done with trim underneath them. And I have to anchor this um, when I get, I, I can use the same anchors, but it's just the trim that's different. So, but I've got that on order, but I can anchor this post with the anchors that I have. But other than that, this is a finished product. Um, and I'm glad you got a chance to um, see this one. I'm glad I was able to bring this in for you. And I've got a video out there that uh, I believe it's called, um, what is it? Uh, Let me help you save some money or something like that. But go back and watch that if you do. Um, it, it, it's all about that right there, my garbage can. The importance of my garbage can. And believe it or not, gar this garbage can is a, important to me. It's a, it's a tool that I use every day. And on there, I say, I told you, there's a segment on there I say, sometimes it, that I empty this thing out twice a day. Well, here's a perfect example of that. Look at how full that is. And my day is only half done. So I need to empty that sucker out go to lunch and then I'll pull you back into I believe we're going to go ahead and do the beadboard and the master bathroom in here and that will probably finish up my day I've got to put beadboard on this wall all underneath here up to this casing here and I get a little ledger board going across here almost like the window sills up there but it's just going to go straight across here the little tr uh, trim piece that goes all the way on top of the bead board up underneath that and across the top of this bead board and then the trim's going to go down to the baseboard down here and then this is going to get baseboard over the bead board all the way across all the way down here so i'm going to shut you off here i'm going to empty out my garbage can i'm going to go to lunch when i come back we'll get set up again and get started on that beadboard. See you then.